Hey everyone, Jennifer Lee Chan. It is Thursday and I have some exclusive updates. I saw Ricky Pearsall in the locker room. He came up to me. I said, hey, how's your family? And he gave me a hug. He's like, they're great. They're all coming for Sunday's game. He's, I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, 27 people. 27 of Ricky Pearsall's friends and family are going to be at the stadium on Sunday. Now, I would assume that if Ricky Pearsall is not playing, he wouldn't get 27 people coming to the game on Sunday. Yes, he's been activated off the NFI. He is on, you know, he's his practice window is open. He has not been put on the 53 man roster yet. So it is kind of interesting to hear that he's got a ton of people coming to see him on Sunday. I think that means he's playing. So Ricky Pearsall has been fully cleared. He has been active in practice. We are only allowed to watch the first four periods. So we get to watch him, you know, catching balls from Brock Purdy, from Brandon Allen, I mean, Josh Dobbs. So he's out there running routes and he looks fast. He looks fluid. You know, he is the guy that they drafted with the first round pick to beat man coverage. And you know who has man coverage, who uses man coverage a lot? The Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I really think that if Kyle Shanahan had his way, Ricky Pearsall would not play in Sunday's game. But because they're dealing with injuries, Debo Samuel still in a blue non-contact jersey, Juwan Jennings still not practicing. So Debo Samuel has been, you know, he's been limited in practice. Juwan Jennings has not been out there at all. I saw him in the locker room. We're not allowed to talk to injured players, so we didn't get to ask him how he's doing. Um, I did see him, but Juwan Jennings is not practicing. He's going through PT. He's working out in the weight room as much as he can for what he can do, probably upper body because it's a hip injury. So I think that with Juwan Jennings being out, I don't think Juwan Jennings is playing on Sunday. That's just what I think. I think Debo Samuel will be limited, but they're going to be careful with him. So I think they need Ricky Pearsall on Sunday. So I do think he's going to play. And I think otherwise he would not have this many people coming to watch him stand on the sidelines. So I don't know whether he will play 10 snaps, 15 snaps, 25 snaps. I do not think he's going to be an every down guy like Brandon Ayuk, but I do think he's going to be used like a Jawan Jennings style rotation in the lineup on Sunday. So that is your exclusive update here for Sunday's game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Also, I talked to Jordan Mason. And he said he's fine. So he was also in a blue non-contact jersey on Thursday. But he told me when I asked him, I'm like, hey, how are you feeling? He's like, fine, I'm good. I'm good. Now, I know players kind of downplay their injuries when you're talking to them. But uh, I also heard Kyle Shanahan talk on KNBR. And he said, we hope to have Jordan Mason play. So whether you're fantasy or whether you're just watching the 49ers football game and you want your players to play, I believe Ricky Pearsall will play, and I do believe Jordan Mason will play as well. Uh, now, as far as the defensive line, there was good news because Jordan Elliott and Malik Collins were both on the practice field. They were limited, but at least they were on the practice field. Thursday is their long practice day. It is, you know, full pads. They're out there running around, thudding up. So I do think that both of those guys play. And Kevin Givens, though, uh, groin injury happened um, on on what day is today? Today's Thursday. It happened on Wednesday. So he was out of practice, the groin injury. Um, I don't know whether he plays or not. So they may have to call up again, Evan Anderson, T.Y. McGill. Those guys are on the practice squad. They are lacking depth at defensive tackle. I don't know who they could um, trade for at this point. Um, I know Hassan Reddick is out there. I just don't think they spend that much money on a guy for this for this because they've got guys that who could come back. So Uter Gross Matos, knee injury, had a procedure. He could come back at the end of the season. The only one that's really out for the entire season is Javon Hargrave. So they hope to get some guys back. Leonard Floyd was back in practice after a vet day. Uh, Trent Williams was back in practice after a vet day. Um, most guys are out there. So uh, Charvarius Ward, who was out of the game with a knee injury last game, he was out there, no injury designation. So I mean, for the most part, the big injuries are at kicker. Both Jake Moody and Matthew Wright are still not practicing. I did see Jake Moody walking around without a boot on, which is positive. So maybe he doesn't come back after this game or the next one. But maybe, um, you know, week nine, Jake Moody comes back. But he is walking around, not running 
but no brace or anything on his legs. So that's good. Did not see Matthew Wright at all. So it's Anders Carlson um, mm-hmm. is who I think is going to kick on Sunday. He is not a boomer of a leg. So they're going to have to tighten up their return coverage, which has been a little bit of a challenge for the special teams. So that is something where the chiefs could definitely exploit. Um, now I talked to Nick Bosa on Wednesday about going up against the chiefs and how much they have gotten favored by refs. Now there was a meme on social media that Bill Vinovich was going to be the ref and he is the ref who is refing the super bowl in February. He is not the ref for Sunday's game. It's Alan Eck and his crew. So um, this is a guy who kind of calls 50, 50. So I looked at kind of his calls, um, home team, away team, about 50-50. But this Chiefs offensive line does commit holding penalties. I mean, they have a ton of holding penalties. Um, Kingsley Suamataia, rookie who was thought to be able to play across the board. Um, He was a guy that I thought, you know, a lot of us thought that, you know, the 49ers could target at number 31. He did go a little earlier than Dominic Pooney, but I think the 49ers made the best choice. Obviously, they know a lot more than I do. Dominic Pooney has been playing incredibly well at right guard. And it's the only position that he didn't play in college. So it's remarkable that he's played that well. But back to the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. They have nine holding penalties by the offensive line through five games. Five. They've only played five because they had a bye week. So this is something that hopefully Alan Eck and his crew will recognize because Nick Bosa is always held when it's the Chiefs. And I know it upsets everybody. Um, It is just part of playing football. Nick Bosa says, hey, it is what happens. He says he doesn't even feel it when it happens unless it's super egregious and a neck is across his, his, you know, an arm is across his neck. But it's just part of playing football. And he says he doesn't feel the pressure on his neck. He just feels himself slower towards the quarterback. So Nick Bosa, I also asked him, how does he you know, mitigate the fact that he's getting 14 pressures, but not getting the sack numbers that he wants. And he said, he's just happy. He's got to stay the course. He's got to affect the game, which he felt like he did a lot in Seattle. So he just wants to do what's best for the team. So if the sack numbers aren't there, he honestly is having an all pro year. He's having one of those kind of, you know, defensive player of the year type seasons, but he just hasn't had the stats to like to back it up, which is unfortunate, but as long as the 49ers are winning, he'd much rather have a, have a Super Bowl than a defensive player of the year. Um, outside of that, uh, I think it's going to be a good game on Sunday. I think um, Brock Purdy, interestingly, Brock Purdy, his NFL debut was against the Kansas City Chiefs. And not when you thought. It was back in 2022. He played 10 snaps against the Kansas City Chiefs, also in week seven. So interestingly, it was two years ago, nearly to the day that he played the Kansas City Chiefs. He was out there for 10 snaps. He actually had a pretty decent drive until he threw an interception. He had a 10 play, I think 67 yard drive through a pass to Juwan Jennings. It was intended for him. It was picked off by Juan Thornhill. But he talked about it with a smile on his face. It was kind of like, you know, a throwback. He was reminiscing in in a a positive way. The 10 plays that he had against the Chiefs. And he was like, man, he's like, Frank Clark is still out here. Chris Jones is still out here. It's the end of the game. Why are they still out here? It was 44 to 23. Jimmy Garoppolo had been pulled from the game because it was out of reach. So Kyle Shanahan gave Brock Purdy a drive. And actually it went decently. They were on the 18-yard line. And then he threw the pick. So... Um, Brock Purdy kind of looked back and it's been two years and how far he's come. And Steve Spagnolo also talked about he remembering that drive and how, you know, he's much better now. He's noticed the growth and he thinks that he's an incredibly talented quarterback. He said, I can't find the weakness in this quarterback. He said, he's really good against the blitz. The way he evades it is, you know, a talent in itself. So he has a ton of respect for Brock Purdy. And I think the Kansas city chiefs do as well. Um, I, I'm really uh, thinking it's going to be an exciting game. And it looked like when I got the email that was like 76%, um, coordinators fans keeping their tickets at home. So there will be a little bit of chiefs fandom in Levi stadium, but that just means that foreigners faithful in the stadium have to be louder. 
Um, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I spoke to, let me, I guess a little, few little updates. I spoke to Dominic Pooney and, you know, we did a, a, a feature on Trent Williams. Matt did one and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, which is fantastic. And he gave Dominic Pooney a ton of props and Dominic Pooney said, you know, it's, he's so blessed to have gone in the third round and ended up with the 49ers and he couldn't be happier. And he said that when he walked in the door for OTAs, he's like, there's no way I'm starting here. There's no way. And then he got all the film of Chris Furster's tapes, his installations, watched that during the break, came back for training camp and guys were injured. So he was thrown in at right guard and it's the position that he never really played in college. But Trent Williams has a ton of respect for him. And Dominic Pooney said, you know, just in six weeks and training camp, all of the things that he's learned about Chris, about off playing offensive line from Chris Furster has changed his path. And I told him that, yeah, you know, Trent Williams had Chris Furster as his coach when he was a rookie. And he's like, what? No way. So when Trent Williams was with the Washington Commanders, back then it was the Washington Redskins, Chris Furster was his offensive line coach. It was Mike Shanahan and Kyle as the offensive coordinator. So he was very well acquainted with them when he came back to the 49ers, which is also why he chose to land in San Francisco in the Bay Area. So all these different connections are always fun. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a good game. And I'll give you more updates later. But I do think Ricky Pierce all plays. That's the whole point of this video. Um, please subscribe. Leave me comments. Let me know if you like this. Do you want a daily update? I can do them daily. I know I missed yesterday. Sorry. Um, but if you want a daily update, let me know. Uh, let me know what else you want me to tell you. I can tell you about what I talk to players about in the locker room. Love to share those stories. So also stay tuned here, Instagram, Twitter, um, threads, Facebook, you name it. It's all Jennifer Lee channel together. So um, I'll give you more updates soon. We'll get the game status from Kyle tomorrow midday. Um, maybe I'll do one in the morning. All right. See you guys soon. Bye.